Hey guys, it's Greg with Apple Explained, and in this video, we're going to explore the issues Apple has been having with China, including everything from declining growth to repair fraud. Now, this topic was the first place winner of last week's voting poll, and if you didn't get to vote, make sure you're subscribed. That way, the voting polls will show up right in your mobile activity feed, and you can let me know which video you'd like to see next. So it was around 2015 when Apple considered China one of the best markets for growth. And Apple actually hoped the Chinese market would one day be bigger than the US. Because at the time, the Chinese smartphone market was booming. And because the Chinese population is so much larger than the US, it made sense that if Apple could become a leader in the Chinese smartphone market, they could potentially make more money from the country than any other. But since then, things haven't exactly played out the way Apple would have liked. Because from 2015 to 2017, Apple's sales to the Chinese market declined by about 23%. And that was the exact opposite of what Apple expected to happen. So the big question is, why isn't the iPhone selling well in China? And the answer is causing some major problems for Apple. Because as the smartphone market was growing rapidly in 2015, Chinese smartphone companies became very aggressive in their push to dominate the market. And they were able to offer smartphones comparable to the iPhone for lower costs with additional features that catered to the local Chinese market. For example, the Oppo R9s was the most popular smartphone in China in 2017, and a major reason for its success was likely its price, which came in at $405, whereas the iPhone 7 cost $765. And the features included in the iPhone likely weren't dramatic enough to justify the $360 premium. Actually, the Oppo R9s featured a very similar design to the iPhone 7 with a display very similar in size. And although it didn't run iOS and wasn't as fast, it was good enough for most users. And that isn't even considering features that make local Chinese smartphones more functional than the iPhone. Take digital payments, for example. Apple Pay has failed to become popular in China since it doesn't allow third-party companies like WeChat and Alibaba to use the technology. As a result, Apple Pay accounted for just 1.8% of Chinese mobile payments in 2017, while far more popular payment services like Alipay and Tencent accounted for 91% of the mobile payment market. So it isn't surprising that Chinese customers wouldn't really consider purchasing a smartphone without native support of the most popular mobile payment platforms. And if that wasn't bad enough, Apple's entire iOS operating system is becoming less valuable to smartphone customers since the rise in popularity of something called mini programs, which is essentially an app ecosystem within the WeChat application and could potentially take the place of iOS since it serves almost all the same functions. Now, WeChat is kind of like the Facebook of China, and it serves almost every purpose you can imagine, from messaging to social media to paying for train rides to booking doctor's appointments. Almost anything you can imagine can be accomplished from within WeChat in conjunction with their mini program platform. And you can see why this is a huge problem for Apple. Because WeChat is available on iOS and Android, so it doesn't really matter what kind of smartphone you have, the WeChat experience and functionality will be the same across all platforms. So it makes sense that Chinese consumers are looking at the iPhone's higher price and wondering what value it offers besides a nice design and a little more power. Now you might be thinking, well, what can Apple realistically do in this situation? They can't control WeChat or make iPhones any cheaper, and that's true. But Apple has taken a slightly different approach to China in 2018 that led to an 11% increase in revenue. And they accomplished that by positioning themselves as a premium smartphone maker with the most premium product, which of course was the iPhone X. In fact, when the Huawei Mate 10 was released following the iPhone 10 in 2017, it didn't feature an edge-to-edge -edge display like the iPhone, not to mention its materials weren't as premium. So by creating a smartphone with a premium design and premium features like Face ID, Apple was able to separate the iPhone from its competition. And because of that, 2018 was a step in the right direction. But as local Chinese smartphone makers begin to catch up to the iPhone 10 and XS, it'll be up to Apple to release another big iteration of the iPhone to re-establish their position as a premium brand in China. 
But declining sales isn't the only issue Apple is having with China, because since 2013, Apple has been fighting iPhone repair fraud in the country, a problem that has cost Apple billions of dollars and prompted a full-scale investigation. And from that investigation, an organized crime scheme was uncovered, where thieves would buy or steal iPhones, remove valuable components including the processor, screen, and logic board, and replace them with fake parts or other items including things like bubblegum wrappers. From there, the thieves would try returning the iPhones to an Apple store by claiming they were broken, and more often than not, they'd get exactly what they wanted a fully functioning replacement iPhone that they would later resell. And remember the parts they harvested from the iPhone they returned? Well, the thieves used those parts to repair iPhones in other areas of China. So not only did they make money from selling their replacement iPhone, but they also made money by offering third-party repairs with authentic iPhone components they got for free. And they were able to scale this operation by standing outside Apple stores with hundreds of iPhones and hiring bystanders to act like customers trying to return their broken phone. And if they were successful in obtaining a new functioning device, they would hand it off and receive payment from the thieves. Now there aren't many Apple stores in China today, so it wasn't difficult for Apple to notice that something was off at their Shenzhen location, since that store alone filed more than 2,000 warranty claims a week, which was higher than any other Apple store in the world. And it made sense why Shenzhen was the target for this kind of criminal operation, because not only is there already quite a bit of criminal activity in the area, but it's located near Hong Kong and contains the hugely popular Wachong Bay Electronics Market, which is likely where the stolen iPhone components are sent. Now, the replacement policy in Chinese Apple stores are similar to the US, where employees will swap out your phone if there isn't any signs of intentional damage, and based on unscientific estimates from the Shenzhen Apple store, about 10% of warranty claims were found to be fraudulent. But once Apple began investigating this issue, it was found that over 60% of replaced iPhones were fraudulent. And considering fraudulent claims in the US ranged from about 5 to 10%, it was clear that Apple had to do something about this issue since it was costing them billions of dollars. In fact, Apple expected to spend about $1.6 billion in 2017 on global warranty claims, but that amount ended up ballooning up to $3.7 billion, more than double their initial estimate, and China was the largest contributor to that cost. Now, Apple's first approach to solving this issue was to create a reservation system, which required proof of ownership of an iPhone, but the system was overrun by hackers, who filled up every reservation time slot which meant legitimate customers didn't even have a chance at getting their warranty claim acknowledged. So Apple's second approach was to use diagnostic software to help detect fake components without having to dissemble the entire phone. But this time, the thieves would just completely disable their iPhones, so Apple wouldn't even have the opportunity to run diagnostic tests anyway. And if that wasn't bad enough, hackers actually obtained customer records and serial numbers of iPhones that were already sold in China, so they could reconfigure the iPhones they intended to return with the stolen serial numbers. Now, these methods may not have worked as well as Apple had liked, but it did make fraudulent returns much harder than it ever had been, and this frustrated a lot of thieves, who eventually tried bribing Apple employees to replace their iPhones. And this all came to a head when one thief threatened a store manager with a cattle prod. So things got so bad that Apple was forced to stop offering in-store replacements altogether. Instead, devices had to be sent to repair centers for inspection. Now, by 2016, fraudulent warranty claims in China was reduced from 60% to between 30 and 50%. So there was definitely an improvement, but those numbers still weren't anywhere near the US's 5 to 10%. So Apple continued to make changes in order to identify fraudulent claims more easily. And most of those changes happened in the supply chain, like dipping batteries in a special dye and coating processors with a waterproof sealant, which were only visible under UV light. And those efforts paid off big time for Apple, who saw a decrease in fraudulent claims in China from about 40% to just 20%, saving the company billions that they would have otherwise lost. Now there is one more problem Apple is having with China, 
but the story is still developing and it's so complex that I think I'll cover it in detail in another video. But in short, it's recently been discovered that Chinese spies allegedly planted microchips on server motherboards manufactured by Supermicro that were sold to Apple and other companies like Amazon for use in their data centers. Now this is all according to 17 unnamed sources, and Apple is denying they found any malicious chips in their servers, but judging by Apple's actions, they may not be telling the whole truth. Because in 2016, Apple dropped Supermicro as a supplier for their servers, and an unnamed government official claimed Apple had contacted the FBI about the incident, which suggests something suspicious was going on that they didn't want the public to know about. Now, as I said before, this is a developing story, so as we find out more, I'll eventually make a video covering it all from start to finish, but in order to do that, we'll have to wait for this whole ordeal to come to an end. So that was a closer look into Apple's China problem, and if you want to vote for the next video topic, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.